Hi, my name is Camila Kennedy, and I'm a research analyst at HERC, the Houston Education Research Consortium, a research practice partnership between Rice University and 11 public school districts in the Houston area. Thanks for joining me as I present some recent results examining how timing of reclassification is associated with the likelihood of taking advanced coursework in middle school. Previous research at HERC has found that English learners who reclassified in middle and high school were less likely to take advanced courses in high school than ELs who reclassified in elementary school and students who were never English learners, who we will refer to as never ELs. This disparity, taking fewer advanced courses in high school, directly explained a meaningful proportion of the gap in, high, in college enrollment and completion for ELs who reclassified later. What's interesting about this finding is that ELs who reclassified in middle school would have had access to advanced coursework in high school. So it sounds as if they might be placed on a specific high school trajectory based on their delayed reclassification in middle school. Because we know that advanced coursework in middle school places students on a trajectory for advanced coursework in high school, we wanted to examine specifically how timing of reclassification is associated with taking advanced coursework in middle school. Therefore, our research question asked, is timing of reclassification associated with the likelihood of taking advanced coursework in middle school? By timing of reclassification, we're referring to the grade that an English learner student reclassified as English proficient, specifically elementary school, middle school, or high school, or never. We also included never ELs in this analysis. We define advanced coursework in middle school as whether or not a student takes and passes Algebra 1 by 8th grade, a course that determines eligibility for advanced math and science courses in high school. To preview our results, we found that timing of reclassification was associated with taking advanced coursework in middle school, even after considering important student, campus, and district factors, including earlier math performance. Specifically, ELs who reclassified in elementary school had a similar likelihood of taking Algebra 1 by the end of 8th grade compared to their never EL peers. LTELs, or students who did not reclassify until middle or high school, were less likely to take Algebra 1 by the end of 8th grade compared to ELs who reclassified in elementary school and never EL students. In this study, we followed four cohorts of EL students who began first grade in Texas public schools in 2007, 2008, 2008-09, 2009-10, and 2010-11, and went on to attend middle school in 10 Houston area school districts. We followed these cohorts for eight years when most of the students would have completed eighth grade. We determined the likelihood of taking Algebra 1 by the end of eighth grade and compared this across never ELs and ELs who reclassified in elementary, middle, or high school, or never. We also considered important student, campus, and district factors. Of the 167,808 students in the sample, 42% of these students began first grade as English learners. 23% of these students went on to take and pass Algebra 1 by 8th grade. 67% of these students were economically disadvantaged. And over half, or 56% of students were Hispanic. While 20% were Black, 70% were White, and 7% were Asian or another race or ethnicity. Of the 42% of students who began first grade as English learners, almost 60% of them reclassified in elementary school. 18% of these students reclassified in middle school and 23% reclassified in high school or never. Together, this indicates that 41% of ELs in the sample went on to become LTELs. Among students who went on to take and pass Algebra 1 by 8th grade, the percent of timing of reclassification varied. 24% of never ELs went on to take Algebra 1 by 8th grade, 30% of ELs who reclassified in elementary school went on to take Algebra 1 in 8th grade, making them the group with the highest percent of students who went on to take advanced coursework in middle school. 11% of ELs who reclassified in middle school took Algebra 1 by 8th grade, and only 2% of ELs who reclassified in high school or never took Algebra 1 by 8th grade. As previously mentioned, we examined the likelihood of taking advanced coursework in middle school while considering several important factors. 
These include several student demographic factors and prior math performance, important campus factors based on the middle schools that these students attended, and the district that the student attended in middle school. Our results indicate that after taking into account important factors, timing of reclassification was associated with the likelihood of taking advanced coursework in middle school for LTELs only. In the graph on the right, the horizontal axis shows the likelihood of taking advanced coursework in middle school compared to never ELs. A value of 0% indicate, indicated by the vertical line means that there's not a difference in the likelihood of taking advanced coursework in middle school compared to never ELs. Values above zero would indicate that a group was more likely to take advanced coursework in middle school, and values below zero indicate that a group is less likely to take advanced coursework in middle school. For EOs who reclassified in elementary school, their likelihood of taking advanced coursework in middle school was not significantly different from never ELs. In other words, ELs who reclassified in elementary school were just as likely to take advanced coursework in middle school as never ELs after considering student, campus, and district factors. However, ELs who did not reclassify in elementary and went on to become LTELs were less likely to take advanced coursework in middle school than never ELs and ELs who reclassified in elementary school. Specifically, ELs who reclassified in middle school were 24% less likely to take advanced coursework in middle school. And ELs who reclassified in high school or never were 59% less likely to take advanced coursework in middle school. To summarize, on average, ELs who reclassified in elementary school had a higher rate of taking advanced coursework in middle school compared to never ELs and ELs who went on to become LTELs. However, after taking into account important factors, particularly their fifth grade math performance, ELs who reclassified in elementary school were just as likely to take advanced coursework in middle school as never ELs. This change is due in large part to the fact that ELs who reclassified in elementary school had the highest fifth grade math performance, which contributed to their increased likelihood of taking Algebra 1 by eighth grade. Once this was accounted for, the advantage that reclassified ELs had went away. ELs who became LTELs were less likely to take advanced coursework in middle school. And this disparity persisted after considering important factors, including fifth grade math performance. ELs who reclassified in middle school were 24% less likely to take advanced coursework in middle school. Despite reclassifying in middle school and therefore having access to advanced coursework in middle school, these students found themselves on a trajectory that limited their ability to take advanced coursework by the end of middle school. Finally, ELs who reclassified in high school were 59% less likely to take advanced coursework in middle school. These findings lead to some important implications. In alignment with previous research, ELs who reclassified in elementary school were just as likely to take advanced coursework in middle school compared to their never EL peers. However, ELs who became LTELs were at a disadvantage and were less likely to take advanced coursework in middle school even if they reclassified in middle school. In other words, in middle school, LTELs were already on a trajectory towards taking less advanced coursework, which is an important indicator of future struggles with high school graduation and college enrollment. For next steps in the LTEL study, we have several additional research questions under examination, including how timing of EL reclassification is associated with middle school and high school achievement, what is the average time of reclassification for ELs, and how do these patterns of reclassification differ by student factors? And finally, what are early warning indicators of becoming LTEL, specifically what factors at early grades are most predictive of an EL becoming LTEL? Thank you so much for joining me as I present to the latest results from the LTEL study. Please do not hesitate to contact either of the lead authors on this project, Daniel Potter or Lizzie Casciola, at the email addresses on the screen. We look forward to presenting new results from this study shortly.